I must ask you a question. Do you like flaming giraffes, giant crucifix, and Hungarian mustache wax? Then you must pay a little homage to Salvador Dali, the most transcendental artist du XXe siècle. Hi guys, first of all, a huge thank you to all of you. Our little channel has just passed the 3,200 subscribers mark. Continue to watch, share, like, and give me your requests or challenges in the comments. Today, let's do something a little bit different. Some of you guys have requested that I do an episode about Salvador Dali, and we will most certainly focus on him today. But Dali spread his art across so many fields, paint, sculpture, film, books, happenings, etc. and across so many different styles that it is really difficult to focus on one single technique. So I will give you some of the tools and references that you need, but you will get to personalize your painting in the end. Surrealism is about letting your own dreams and fears invade freely the canvas, so you will have your part to play too. Tim Minchin once said that a genius is nothing more than a madman with an audience, and Dali was indeed an out-of-the-box character. Born in 1904, his parents made him believe that he was the reincarnation of his late brother. Fascinated by Velázquez, he once said in an interview, if I can paint a canvas like Velázquez, I will die the next day, he studied the classics like Raphael in Madrid. After World War I, he joins André Breton in the Surrealist movement with Magritte, Duchamp, etc. Their goal was to let their imagination loose and break all the limits of classic art and society in general, using symbols, dreams and, well, more often than not, humor in their masterpieces. Dali himself was a professional prankster and it's always difficult to know if he was serious or joking in any situation. In 1965, he appeared on the show What's My Line on CBS where a panel of blindfolded regular guests had to guess what was the job of the mystery celebrity. You must be into art. Are, are you a performer by any chance? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Are you a writer? Have you been published? Yes, yes. Are you in sports? An athlete, maybe? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, you're in movies, aren't you? You're a leading man. Yes, 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 yes. You can imagine that hilarity and confusion ensued, but... Dali was not completely wrong. He did an awful lot of things. Painting, sculptures, movies, writing, etc. And Dali is also a painter very close to my heart. I obviously grew up in the 70s and 80s, and since I have always loved to paint and draw, Salvador Dali was the reference for me. Can you imagine that he was maybe the last legend, the unique master still alive at that time? The new generation hadn't arrived yet in the limelight, but he was everywhere, on TV, on radio, in the newspaper, with his famous gravity-defying moustache, his cane always elegantly dressed like a dandy and using words like transcendent and oniric. You couldn't miss him. As a kid, I remember that my parents were bringing us in the south of France every summer for vacation on the seaside near the Spanish border. So one year, I convinced my parents to drive across the border to Spain and go to visit Figueras. The town theater had been transformed by Dali into a museum to house his art pieces and I keep fond memories of the visit. I remember in vivid details climbing the golden staircase to see my west face appear through the looking glass. I was convinced to be in the divine presence of the master. You still can visit the museum today and in those COVID-19 times, the official website even has a virtual visit that I strongly recommend. I'll put a link in the description. For his painting, Dali was using several styles, from the most figurative, he claimed he was painting with photographic precision, 
to something more abstract, almost cubist. So today, let's not really focus on the style or techniques, but rather on the process of doing something surrealist with Dali's favorite elements. Surrealism has great ties with psychology and psychiatry, especially the theories of Freud and the symbols seen in dreams. Dali once said that his paintings were not giving any message, although we know some to be representing the struggle of Spain during the Civil War. He claims that he was painting the things that came to his mind 10 to 15 minutes before sleeping. So the idea was for me to try and remember, as I was going to sleep, all the things I liked about Dali's painting. I didn't try to research beforehand and did this first part only by memory. Amid this stuff of dreams, or sometimes nightmares, a few are for me very representative. As a background, Dali often represented a desert with a very blue sky, the kind of dry land that Don Quixote could have wandered in search for the windmills. There were sometimes a few hills or mountains on the horizon inspired by the rocks on the coast of Cadaqués, where Dali had a family home for vacations. This also meant that the sun and the shadows would be very sharp. Faces or element of faces he liked to draw faces hidden in the objects, or sometimes simply an eye, a mouth, a nose. A lot of shapes are assembled to give the optical illusion of a face. Drawers that were representing all the things one has to open in their subconscious when doing a psychoanalysis. It is an image borrowed from Freud's theories. The bodies are often deformed in Dali's paintings tall, elongated, skeleton-like, but also with protrusion, growth coming out of nowhere and held in place by some crutches. Animals, mostly exotic animals actually, elephants, tigers, giraffes, rhinos, but also horses, sometimes deformed too, with long legs or doing fantastic things like flying or being on fire. In my point of view, but this is only my opinion, there is also something very Spanish about Dali's painting. The presence of Catholic symbols, the sharp light that gives a very defined shadow to everything, the celebration of bodies like on a beach on Cadaqués, and we can try to infuse some of this a little bit too. Now that we have selected some elements, we can draw a sketch on a piece of paper, maybe a thumbnail size, try some colors uh, with gouache or anything really, to see how all of this will uh, be placed in relation with each other. Compare the size, try different formats, landscape or portrait, different combinations, uh, what should come in the foreground and in the background, etc. For the first few drawings, I tried to do it only from memory, without using any of Dali's paintings as reference. I tried to give the lady figure a kind of a flamenco dance move for the Spanish feel, a mountain with the profile of a face and a crying rhino. When I checked the actual artwork in detail, this composition reminded me a lot of the Fleming giraffe and I realized that my dancer uh, needed to be much more elongated and skinny, that she needed to have some protrusion in the back. I later realized that they were actually belts, and so I corrected all this a bit.
let's plant the decor with the background. A beautiful blue sky fading slowly into white as we come closer to the horizon and with a tinge of yellow ochre. I also later mix a bit of Venetian red which gives uh, an almost lavender hue near the horizon line. The desert sand is also a gradient of brown to yellow ochre getting lighter as we get near the horizon. For the mountains, I started by drawing a profile of a face and painted it like stones. The nose can figure the highest peak of the mountain range, while the lips, eyebrows and chin would be the lower hills. I started by defining the light and shadow, working with a mix of browns and greys. Each time, I tried to make the surface look more like stones by using sharp edges and geometrical shapes. I placed the general silhouette, very tall, skinny and almost ominous, with the arm in something of a flamenco position. You know, you, you pick the apple, you throw the apple. I wanted to use a reddish color for the top body and a flowing white skirt. The drapes on the skirt are done very easily by alternating light and dark strokes following the anchor point, hips and knees. The fabric hangs from this point and make these curves at the center. We find the belts at the back, hanging on some uh, small crutches. They support each other and you have to uh, think of gravity pull when you paint them. The supported parts are higher while the rest hangs more freely. Sharp lights and shadows are done with black and white and uh, used also to give the skirt a kind of derelict or frayed aspect. Finally, I tried to put as many drawers as I could. Uh, their yellow front is playing with the red of the face to give the colors of the Spanish flag. Once again, you have to delimit the lights and shadows very sharply on the knobs too.
I drew a quick rhino with a bluish mid-tone and did the shadow with a dark gray and black uh, and the light with white. Once again, uh, the shadow on the floor is intense, very precise because of the strong sun coming from the right. And I painted a big symbolic tear coming from his eye. Well, finally, the details. I leave them to you. As we said, Dalib had many styles and techniques, so based on this pre preliminary composition, you can finish either very detailed, with photographic precision, or more abstract. That is the freedom of painting. The main idea for today was to play with the recurrent symbols and elements that composed Dalib's paintings. So I hope you enjoy this uh, little exercise. Let me know in the comment if you like that rather than a more uh, theory heavy or technical style analysis. Please like, share, comment uh, with your request and I will see you next time. Oh yes, yes. <laughs>